I am very excited to be here. Um, I was there on this stage uh, last year um, talking about the prototypes I made with my little company at the time. We're a group of 10 people. I'm the youngest one, but the group is very talented. There are some ex-employees of StarVR. And we have been teasing this uh, picture for the last few days on social media. Maybe you've seen it. Uh, I wasn't expecting so much response to that. And I'm very happy to share our product today with you, with the community, and where it all started for me, actually, two years ago at the Odyssey Challenge. Um, so that was last year uh, with the prototypes, and I explained the thing we were doing with a French surgeon. Um, things are a bit different now, but the product is basically the, the same. It's a video see-through device for the B2B market and a little bit of the B2C market. So for that, I will let you with a quick video we put together, and you will learn a bit more about the, the product. Thank you. The, the first uh, two prototypes are uh, here with me, and you will be able to test the optical system at the booth we have at the exhibit today, and I'm uh, very excited. I was waiting for this day for three years now, and uh, I, will, I will dive a little bit more into the device and how we put it together and how we're still trying to make it happen. And don't worry, I, I will get to the price at the end. So those are the key blocks we were addressing, we wanted to address when we were putting the device on the paper uh, one year ago. And we partner with incredible companies, including the one of Pablo Benitez, uh, Limbach, and also Qualcomm. Um, standalone device is hard to put all the compute power on your head to do SLAM, to do hand tracking, to do eye tracking, to have a high resolution, high frame rate. And we crammed a lot of uh, pieces of hardware in our device, and we had to keep it uh, very thin. So our optical system helped us uh, do that, actually. We don't use a Fresnel lens or a standard biconvex lens. We use the optical system that Pablo designed, and we, we enhanced this design a little bit and uh, I, I will talk about it. Um, the cool thing about the device is that the battery is at the back of the head, so it's more balanced than, for example, uh, the Quest or the Vive Focus. Um, you, can, you can distinguish the, the pass-through cameras at the front, and I will, I will dive into that uh, a little bit more. But since we're in an in a optical conference, I will uh, dive into the lens. So this is, this is a, a video of our, of our lens. Uh, you, I see a lot of people are, are taking pictures. It's, it, it will be all on, on YouTube soon, don't worry. Um, so this is the, the, the system we're using for uh, VR, and then for AR, we're doing pass-through. So it's not only a, a, a lens, it's a full optoelectronical system. On the right here, you have the eye tracker, 
and then you have the, the lens. So you can clearly see the four elements of our lens, and you can distinguish the micro lens at the center, which allows us to hide, uh, it's, it's actually the micro lens is the lens of the CMOS sensors we use for eye tracking. The, the cool thing with, the, with this lens, it's not only about the optical performance we, we get, it's also about the form factor and the, thing, the fact that we can hide things right at the center. So we actually have the best point of view for doing eye tracking. Um, so how, what does an image for this lens looks like on the display? This is the kind of uh, map distortion you will, uh, you will get. Uh, this is a chromatic and a geometric map distortion you get, and this is a sample image of what is displayed on the screen. So the four images are actually combined into one, uh, uh, and the users only see only one image, and some pixels at the center uh, are uh, duplicated on, on the screen. So it allows us to do super sampling at the center of the image, and on the four borders. So it's very interesting. Uh, the screen we are using are uh, 1600 by 1600 uh, LCD panels, and they're running at 90 hertz. So which brings me to the last slide. We're using the Qualcomm XR2 chipset and uh, other kind of, of hardware blocks for the video pass-through. Um, the only thing I was allowed to say from the Qualcomm marketing was the, this slide here. Um, the XR2 is an incredible chipset. It allows us to do uh, pretty much everything you need for uh, XR, and we are very happy to partner with them and to build our device with, with this chipset. It was announced in December, but we've been working with them, uh, uh, I think, on the, uh, for the last six months now on, on, on the integration of the chipset in our hardware, and we are preparing to be the first device to ship uh, this summer with the XR2 on board. So we, we continue to move very fast. Remember last year when I was on stage, I had my prototype and I said, uh, in the next 15 months, I will come back with a product. And we are 12 months after that. And the, 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 the first batch is coming uh, this summer. Um, the AI performance is very interesting. We are doing all kinds of things with that. The eye tracker and the hand tracking system which is actually the best controller for VR and AR uh, now, is done on the, uh, on the chipsets. And I think 2020 is the year where we finally see the hardware blocks for latency pass-through on a standalone device. Uh, Vario achieved that with their product, but it's tethered to a, to a very high energy consuming computer. And we try to challenge that by uh, cramming the system uh, on the head of the users. It was very, very difficult. And I actually wanted to put the compute board at the back of the head, but with all the high speed signals and the band white, the cables were too long, actually. During the development of the, of the device, everything bad that could happen actually happened. Uh, we're based in Paris, and we had the yellow vest, and we are building our lens in Hong Kong, and there were protests there. It was very, very difficult to to work during this time, but we, we hopefully we, we didn't have a delay. Okay, so we have this device now, and what can you do with that? Um, because the content is, um, is, I mean, the hardware is nothing without the content, and it's the very difficult part for a startup like, like mine to, to have a relevant product. <laughs> I see people take, taking pictures. <laughs> Um, so the kind of device we're bringing to the market is fully ready for B2B, the B2B market, and uh, every industrial company I talk to, they already have a use case for our device. And, they're, and I'm very excited to, to have our first uh, customers try, try the device uh, on seat uh, in April. But also, uh, when you can mix AR and VR with such a large field of view, uh, I kind of want to see new kind of games and new media where you have experiences in VR, you start on a seat and then you can get up uh, and, and do some pass-through experiences uh, that, that, that could be very incredible. And we want to partner with uh, game studios. We are already partnering with a, a big 
uh, game company, and you will see amazing stuff uh, coming out this summer. Um, and I, would, I want to say the, the same thing for the medias. And the biggest announcement is the price of the product today. Uh, we made uh, a lot of efforts to bring the cost of the device down, uh, and this is the price point we, we, we got. Um, so we are targeting the industry, but when you think about it, it's not so far from the price of a high-end iPhone. Uh, so we're, uh, we're, I, I'm very excited for all the hobbyists and some developers and the, the cool ideas they, they will, they will uh, explore with this, uh, with this device. You can pre-order today. Uh, this video uh, is on YouTube and our website is live, live now. And you, you can meet us at the booth. We'll do a press event in one hour. Uh, maybe don't come at the booth because it will be a little bit crazy in the, in the next uh, a few minutes. But uh, we, are very, we are very open. We are always looking for partners, especially in optics. Uh, Limbach did an incredible job and we, are, we already have our version two on the paper. Uh, that will, when we will start the development uh, this summer. Also, I want to point out that the, we have the first prototype ready, and when I, I want to tell you a little anecdote that when I told you that everything bad could happen, everything happened. We were working on, on the board with the, and trying to calibrate the optical system of our lens, of our crazy lens that you will, that, that you will try in a few moments. And we were free on the table, working with you know, all these kind of flex cables. Everything was very fragile. And we, are, we only had one board at the time, like it was like one month ago. And the table collapsed. <laughs> yeah. And so hopefully everything was working fine uh, again, but uh, it, was, it was crazy. And uh, I will ri write a book about the development of this device, trust me. Um, I can't wait to, I can't wait to uh, see people try it. Uh, and I think the, the best use cases I've seen today are for surgery and games, but I think the, the biggest share of the market will be for uh, the industry, especially the use case you see on HoloLens. There are, there are use cases you can address on HoloLens and use cases you can address with the Lynx device or the Vario device, but the Venn diagram does, is not completely uh, a, 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 circ a circle. There are some use cases that you cannot do with HoloLens that you can do with, with Lynx, especially when, when you want uh, full color uniformity, uh, when you want a cheaper device, when you want full occlusion, uh, this kind of stuff. The cool thing about the device is uh, there is a peripheral obscuration, but uh, it has the flip-up design uh, as well, and it should fit uh, a, a lot of uh, people's head. Um, it was very, very difficult uh, to make because we don't have the, the same uh, uh, firepower as the big companies that are making headset today, but uh, we'll start uh, shipping uh, this summer for everyone. Thank you.